Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about Microsoft Forms, send a form directly to multiple channels, and set a time duration. Now, these are all new features. In fact, the one about sending a form directly to multiple channels was just announced two days ago. Also, as I was testing this, I ran into a slight issue where my mailboxes weren't showing up, specifically the ones generated by Teams. They weren't showing up as I was about to send the form. And how do I troubleshoot that? Well, stick around because I'll walk you through that in this video. Therefore, it's very important that you stay with me right till the end. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And this was the announcement that was made about sending forms directly to multiple channels at the same time. As you can see, it was announced on August 30th, which is just two days ago. And we'll also talk about the set time duration at the end. Now, the important thing over here is that now, when you're sending it, you know, click on the collect responses option on the top, which I'll show you in the form, you get this additional functionality, which is the ability now to send directly through Outlook and through Teams. And you can either use a mailbox, which is a shared group mailbox type of situation, or an individual person, and it will go directly to them. So now that you understand this feature, Let's go take a look at how it works. So here is a form slash quiz that I already made and I'm gonna walk you through how that works. On the top right, like any Microsoft forms or quiz, you come over here and there's collect responses. However, now you've got this additional window functionality over there. And over there, you can go ahead and now type in, it says name, group, or email address. And the moment you do that, it actually does some fantastic things. So I'm gonna go through an example, all right? I have a group over here, see in my Microsoft Teams, you can see I actually have a group called forms, surveys, and quizzes. So I'm gonna go and send this form that I've built to that group. That group has been generated by Microsoft Teams. So here we go. I'm gonna come back in over here and that name was just called form service quiz. So I'm just gonna go and search for forms. The moment I do that, it is searching and there you go. It showed up the form service quiz. And when I click on it, this thing went ahead and updated. Did you notice what it did? All right, it, the text was something which is very simple, very blank. But moment I filled out the address, it went ahead and filled this up. Now let's focus on what it did because it's actually a lot of good information over here. First of all, it is, it is keeping track of what is today's date. It will go ahead and add seven more days and it will put that as your date on this request. So right now it will tell you, hey, please be sure to submit it by so and so day, which is always seven days out. Other thing that it did, if you haven't already noticed, it is it automatically went ahead and calculated what would be the guesstimate, which means the total duration somebody might take to fill out the forms. And it does that automatic calculation for you and it puts that in the description over here. It says the quiz search your feelings is now available and will take you two minutes to complete that. I didn't put that in. I didn't have to clock myself to decide it's two minutes. It automatically does that. And I've actually covered this in a few of my other forms videos, how Microsoft Forms through AI will automatically go ahead and generate that time span for you. So if you've got a really large form with multiple sections, it will calculate that for you. In fact, it even starts giving you this information over here that this form is going to take X number of minutes. It does that. So that same method which I had showed about in the past of it using AI and automatically calculating the total time span duration, it is putting that information right over here, which is why this form has only got two simple questions. That's why it says it'll only take you two minutes. Very neat. Second thing is that you actually had the option to go ahead and select your checkbox. So by default, I only selected the Outlook one. If I go ahead and now click the Teams one, you see how it went ahead and added the text over there? That's the existing thing. It was able to go and do that. So until and unless you hit the checkbox, then only will it go ahead and add this text. Something to keep in mind. And then finally, I go ahead and click on this send button. So keep in mind that you do have a little bit of scrolling to do. Also keep in mind that you have options. If I just wanted to send it to Outlook, or if I just wanted to send it to Teams, or if I want to do it both, you've got that flexibility. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on send. And while it's sending, there's a one important thing I wanna point out is how amazing this is. Well, now it's giving you the flexibility to reach out to your end users wherever they may be most comfortable. If you are sending this to a certain group of people, for them, mailboxes might be a best place, the Outlook mailbox. For other people, it might be Teams. So it's giving you that flexibility and it's really neat because now you have that ability. And so here it is, the message has been sent and it says that, okay, you will receive email notifications with the form status that helps you rem remember the recipients. I'll talk about that additional thing in just a minute. But here you go, the information has been sent out now let's go and take a look at how that works in each of them. So here I am in Teams and I've gone ahead and signed in as Rosanna. Rosanna is a user. Rosanna is also part of this group over here. Therefore, she's able to access it. 
So when I was testing this, my first reaction was, let me come up over here to the Microsoft Forms because it was sent to this group. So I went to the Microsoft Forms. Initially, it never asked me which channel it is. So by default, I expected it to be in the general one. But when I click on general over here, I am not seeing anything. In fact, the last message over here for today was just a text message I'd sent. I don't see any forms entry over here. However, I did see this. There's something which has generated a chat. So when I click on the chat, see right over here, it has started a group chat. And the group chat name is the exact same name as the group. And hey, now that you see it, the post has been made. Now let's go and look at this for a few minutes. There's a couple of interesting things that's happening. First of all, it's a group chat, which we understand. But who did this chat start with? Well, this chat started with me and I was the one who generated the form. So keep that in mind that whoever went ahead and created the form and triggered that send over there to go and collect the responses, it is only through that person where the actual information, the group chat information will come in. So keep that in mind because if you want to do this through somebody else all through a general person, you may have to use some kind of service account or an application account to do that. But if you do it, it's going to look like you went ahead and added that question. All right, keep that in the back of your mind. But this is pretty neat. It came in over here and now I can go ahead and click on start. So when I click on start, it went and directed me to the browser. It didn't do it directly inside Teams. It directly did that in the browser. So here I am. It's the form that I went in and created. I'm saying, how am I good? I'm saying, I'm feeling awesome. And then I'm going to say, you know, how are you feeling today? One awesome, 10. I said, okay, I'll feel two. I'll go and click on submit. And it goes and takes care of that. Also, if I were to come back to my Microsoft Teams and say, actually, I went to my Outlook now. In Outlook, in your group, this is where the actual email comes in. It comes into the group's mailbox. And see, that's just an example. I went in and actually took another form. In that form, this time I only went and sent it to the mailbox as a test. And see, it came in over here. So in your Outlook, yes, it does come inside the group's mailbox because that's where it should go. And this is just an example. Also over here, the exact same thing. If I click on it, it actually goes ahead and opens it up in the browser as a separate tab. But here's the important thing is that if you leave the settings in the form by default, you will be able to get the same form filled in by the user if they activated the themes and if they activated it to the mailbox. It basically is the exact same person filling it. So I want you to keep that in mind is that it is not smart enough yet to know that, hey, the person already clicked to the Teams or the person has already clicked through the Outlook. So don't go and do it in the other place. It is not that smart right now. However, there is a way to work around that. So come back to your Microsoft Forms, the form that we created. So I'll go back over here because this is the place we actually created the form. And in the collect responses section, specifically over here under settings, go to this settings area over here. And this is where you want to go ahead and do more information. Specifically for us right now, I only want the person to have a one time per response. See, in this new form that I went, I went and actually did the selection because now I don't really care where the person is filling from. The next time I go ahead and send this form, if they've already gone ahead and selected that in Teams, great. They cannot go ahead and do that in Outlook and vice versa. This is the important one, okay? One response per person. Also, to keep in mind that this can only work for only people in my organization can respond. If you go and select this one, anyone can respond, then the one time respond option is grayed out. So which makes sense because externally, you don't know who that person is. You can only keep track of who all has a response internally, right? So keep that in mind. Awesome. So this was the main important thing that I want you to point out is that it sends out to multiple channels, doesn't keep track of who it is. Also, the other thing that I noticed is that when I go ahead and now go back to see my teams, this was the form that I showed up in my teams. After I went ahead and clicked on it, the form over here doesn't go ahead and change it to, ah, you've already gone ahead and completed. It still shows that, hey, this is a new entry. And now in Teams, you really don't know if you've gone ahead and submitted that. Again, that's why it is so important that in the forms, you select that one time only. Because over here, even though I filled it, I still see that I might forget that, hey, did I fill this form or not? And I might actually go and click on this and I will get the option to go and fill that up. Same thing happens in Outlook as well. After that, I've gone and actually filled out the form, I come back to my mailbox and I might go somewhere else. I'll come back over here. I still see that option. I still see the email as is. It doesn't tell me if you've already completed filling out the quiz or the form. It's still there. You might go and click on it. You might go ahead and resubmit that as well. All right. So again, keep that in the back of your mind is that in the form, go ahead and do that one time allowance only. All right. So that's the important thing. 
But isn't this awesome? Now you can send it to multiple channels, whether it is Teams or Outlooks, the two high traffic and high volume places, and the user can go and submit the exact same form from any other places, and all the information is brought back to the same Microsoft Forms, because when you go back to the same Microsoft Form as a user, you will go ahead and capture all the responses right here. It's the exact same place, the exact same central location. Okay, so in the intro, I talked about a potential gotcha that you might run into about mailboxes not showing up. Let me demonstrate that for you. So what I have over here is that exact same Microsoft form. And in my Teams, I want to go and put this over here, ask in IT questions. It's a team. I want to go and send it to this mailbox of this team over there. So let's try to attempt that, all right? So I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to click on this collect responses. And over there, I'm going to search for ask IT. And this searching, but it says no results found. Well, how did that happen? Because we went in and did that for forms. I just searched for forms. I didn't even type the whole thing. But forms, surveys, and quizzes showed up. So I come back over here. Forms, surveys, and quizzes showed up, but ask in IT questions didn't? Why did that happen? Well, there's a little bit of a setting in the back end that you've got to go ahead and actually take care of. So let me go and show you what that is. I'm going to go back into my back settings over here, and I'm going to go into the M365 admin group under Teams and Groups. I'm going to go to Active Teams and Groups. Over here, I went and searched for Ask IT Questions. That's the same team that we saw. It has its own M365 group, and here is its mailbox settings. See right over there in the settings, under email, this is the default checkbox that you have. It says, don't show team email addresses in Outlook. Because it doesn't show it in Outlook, that is why when we search for it in Microsoft Forms, it does not show up over there. This is the main reason. And so now you might have already guessed this. Like, well, Daniel, this box is checked over here, hence it doesn't show up for Ask IT Comms. I bet if I go to now forms and surveys and over there, I click on settings. Yep, I had to actually go ahead and uncheck that box, wait for a few hours for everything in the N365 to actually go and synchronize it. You know, the N365 group over here synchronized with Microsoft Forms. It took a few hours for that, but after I unchecked it, what I could not search for before, I literally could not search for forms, quizzes, and surveys. I could not search for that. Now, if I went over here and I search for it, it shows up. Key, key thing is that if you are using those Teams mailboxes, you want to send it to that Teams group mailbox, you got to come back over here to M365 Admin Center under Teams and Groups, Active Teams and Groups, go over, click on it, it goes to the General tab by default, go to Settings, and then uncheck this one over here. See, like the example that we did. Now for Ask IT Questions, I want to send it to that group. That means I'm going to come, click on it, go on the settings, and I'm going to go ahead and click on uncheck. And I'll go ahead and click on save. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You say, whoa, 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 Daniel, I'm going to now go ahead and do something new over here. I got to use a mailbox. I'm going to start sending the mailbox. Do I have to pay anything additional as far as the license goes for that? And I got great news for you. If you are only using a mailbox of this type, then you don't have any additional license for use to use. What I mean is that if you go to this Microsoft document whose link I've put in the description below, it actually says that shared mailboxes usually don't require a license unless and until you exceed this, which is 50 gigs of storage is using use, or if you want to do in-place archiving, or if you want to have any litigation, then you will have to use the Exchange Online Plan too. However, if you are just sending out regular emails for our situation, where for that mailbox of that Teams group, I'm just sending out that notification by Microsoft Forms, no additional license is needed. What you only need to do is come back over here and uncheck that box and you'll be good to go. So now let's talk about the set time duration. And as I showed over there, it's basically to go ahead and put in a time bound limit. What it basically does is that if this was say used by an education tenant people and over there you've actually gone and built a test, then putting a time bound, a time limit is amazing for that scenario. And you can do that now in Microsoft Forms. So to kind of replicate and reenact the scenario, I've got this fairly lengthy form. It's just a basically survey that you fill out a fairly lengthy survey. And now I want to put some time limit on that. But before I do that, let's take a look at something what it looks like right now. So I go and grab the link. I have not made any changes yet. I go to another tab, I paste it. And if you go and start and access the link, this is what it looks like right now. You open up the link and you're able to fill out that form just like it is. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to that settings, and in our settings, we are going to now leverage this set time duration. And the moment I click on set time duration, by default, it gives you 30 minutes, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and now set that to only three minutes, all right? I'll intentionally do that three minutes. So I've done all of this in, it automatically gets saved. Now, let me just go back and make sure I get another good URL, come back over here, paste it, and watch what happens. Now when we go over there, a new intro form comes in. Now we didn't have to build this, it automatically does it, and that's fantastic, because it explains to you what happens. 
First of all, it went in and got the time bound that we put in, which is three minutes. So it says three minutes. And then it says, hi, Daniel, this is a timed form. Once you start, you can't pause the timer. Very important information for you to know. Don't worry, form gives you a final minute reminder before your submission. Your answers will automatically submit it when the time is up. Please prepare before you bring, before you begin to manage your submission time. So I'm gonna click on start. And when I click on start, the countdown starts over here. Now, isn't this awesome? Because you all know that I built Power Apps Canvas app and to replicate something like this, I would have to actually use the timer function. I would have to use the slider control, put in some variables. That's a lot of work over here, but I can do this dynamically and automatically without any code in Microsoft Forms. So if this is a one-time submission type of scenario that you need and you want to make it time bound, please use Microsoft Forms and use this functionality. So what I'll do is I'll now take my own sweet time and I'm gonna go ahead and finish this form because I wanna make sure I hit that one minute mark and see what happens. Come over here, come over here, come over here. All right, so we're gonna be inside the one minute mark. I didn't get any notification, all right? Which means we still had two minutes. So now let's see, I think by the time you hit that one minute, we'll start getting some notification. But let's go and kill some more time. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. As you can see, the slider gets a little smaller over here. In three, one, to, ah, so your answers will be submitted when the timer is up. So what happens is I'm gonna make sure that I don't do this way, okay? I'm gonna pretend like I haven't even just filled out all of this and I didn't fill out the uh, bottom section over there yet. Timer ends. All right, so inside the nine second mark, I'm gonna start typing in. Say, so, yes, I have so much feedback to give and I want, oh, see, after that, I didn't hit submit. It automatically went ahead and did the submission for me but did it save that text? Well, let's go and find that out. So I'm gonna close this one over here. And I said, I got that one response. When I click on the response, I can view the result. And when I click on view the result, we know that all of these things got saved. So I'm gonna quickly scroll out to the bottom. And in the bottom, it only picked up the text, which was right at that three minute mark. I had started typing a lot more, but this is all the information that is took in because by that time, it automatically went ahead and submitted the form. So that time bound thing is fantastic, that timer because it gives you a heads up notice. Then it also did a countdown. It's got that nice slider functionality. And in one minute mark, it gives you a warning. And then moment you hit zero, it automatically went and submitted the form. I really, really like this new functionality. Wow, both of those are really remarkable functionalities because now when you have the ability to send it across multiple channels, you can send it to the places where people are most comfortable with. Because you know that there are a lot of people who use mail as their single source of transportation. Other people have transitioned over to Teams. Well, now you can access it in both the places. I really wish there was a functionality in the analytics to tell me where the person submitted. If you think that is important to put it in the comments below, I'll go ahead and forward that to the product group. And then the time bound with the timer functionality was amazing. Out of the box, just one little click over there. You set up how much time that you want and it slots that slider functionality on the top. All of this is done automatically. I didn't have to put any code or anything. And it even gives you a warning functionality. And then after you're done, it went in and submitted the form. So you don't miss anything. You don't have to lose or get concerned that I might lose information. No, you lost nothing. It does all of it. So I was really, really impressed with this. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and you start leveraging this. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.